Today I want to talk about the prophetic person because we have a responsibility to be mature. Okay, We have a responsibility to be mature in how we carry ourselves. Woof. I'm telling you, I had to learn lessons, you know. <laughs> Nobody really taught me these things. Experience taught me these things. And mentors and fathers and mothers taught me these things. Uh, but I want to talk to you. And I, uh, after I share this part, I'm going to talk to you about 11 different types of prophetic people. And there's way more. You can articulate more. But I want to give you 11. Someone say 11. Different types of prophetic people okay but i'm talking about the prophetic person right now because um because remember i said you could have a high level gift of the prophet or of the prophetic but be underdeveloped remember jeremiah was called into the office of a prophet before he was born but he still needed to develop and to grow as a person and as he grew, his office grew. I'm going to say that again. As he grew as a boy, as a young man, as a man, as a person, his office and his authority grew. Some of you are wondering, why aren't you getting the bigger platforms? Why am I not being promoted? Are you internally growing? Man may be impressed with the outward form, but God knows your hearts and knows what's going on on the inside. I pray that God will promote you like never before. Amen. Shout out about it. Wow, this is gold. This is so good. This is so gold. Um. I, I want to talk to you about the difference between personality and character. This is so good. This is so good, people of God. I'm going to talk to you about personality and character. Because you can have a unique personality, but have bad character. You can have charisma, but have bad character. You can have a persona that comes off as to people, but your character is off. And just because someone's personality, just because you don't jive with someone's personality, my personality, like, you know, you see me, I'm very fun, I'm very free, I can joke, you know, I can, some, some, some of my jokes can be a little, you know, raunchy or real at times, and you know, I love Trump, I'm pro-MAGA, pro-guns, pro-life, pro-biblical marriage, uh, you know, I'm pro, uh, you know, a church. I'm pro first and second amendments. Like, you know, this is me. Like, that's my personality. But does that relate to my character, my morals, my values, my value system, my foundation of my core being that keeps me who I am? So there's a lot of personality and you may not jive on my personality because i'm so pro trump i'm so maga i'm so you know pro guns you may not jive on my personality but you might actually jive with my character my morals and the integrity and the values that i walk by i carry and i live in does that make sense and i want i want to talk to you the difference between prophetic personality and prophetic character okay but first let's go into the definition of personality versus character if you're with me give me some hearts and likes here personality shows who you are to the outside world character reveals who you are on the inside all right personality is related to a person's attitude and behavior and character is related uh, to a person's values, morals, and internal will. Hey there, Andrew. Blessings to you. Shaka ba ba ba. 
personality is who we seem to be, but character is who we actually are. Personality is who we are physically, and character is who we are mentally and morally. Personality is our outward appearance, and our character is our internal morals. Our personality may change, but our character deepens. This is the difference between personality and character. Now, why am I sharing this? Because there are many types of prophets. There are many types of prophets. Okay. There are many types of prophets with different personality. Like Jeremiah. Look at Jeremiah. Jeremiah is known as the weeping prophet. Okay. Look at Samuel. Samuel is known as a seer prophet. You look at uh, Nathan. You know how Nathan seemed to correct and you look at Isaiah, he's known as the Messianic prophet. There's many different types of personalities as prophetic people. Look at Papa James Gull. You know, he can be so, you know, he can be singing and so joyful and he can be so exuberant in, ex in his expression. And all of a sudden there's times where he's serious and he's, you no know, dialed in and he's focused and he's a businessman. He's a look at Doug Addison. There's times where Doug Addison is laughing and goofy and you know he's comedic in the glory and the anointing. Look at Jeremiah Johnson. You know, he as a prophet, he's many times serious and brings the fear of the Lord. And he, you know, he brings uh the holiness of God and you know he has a reverence and he's broken and he weeps before God. Look at Prophet Charlie Champ. You know, where he loves the glory and he loves harvest and miracles. And, you know, he's he's a prophet that loves to pray. And, you know, there's many different types of prophets. Who am I talking to? Many different types of prophets. Personalities. Come on, somebody. But does it mean that their character's off? Their personalities as prophetic people may be different. But doesn't mean that their character, their moral system, their integral uh, integral bone, their vertebrae is broken or off. Many different types of prophetic people. That's right. Elijah was sarcastic. Very good, Andrew. Elijah was sarcastic. <laughs> oh, shababa. Amen. Many women prophets as well, for sure. Deborah was a fierce judge prophet, prophetess. But you see, again, personality, very different. But character, say character. Your moral values. And I want to talk to you right now. Because many times we get caught up about the personality of prophetic people. Oh, I don't like how they sing. Oh, I don't like how they laugh. Oh, I don't like how they're so loud. Oh, I don't like how he's so sarcastic. Oh, I don't like how he's always talking about President Trump. Oh, I don't like how he's always talking about racism. So there's many different types of prophets, personalities. But, but does it actually reflect their character? It's the heart, the character that matters. It's, it's your moral integral fibers. It's your, it's your morality, your value system that matters. And, and again, we get so caught up on the personality of pr prophetic people, how unique, weird, charis weird, charis mania, how peculiar they are. But is that actually a reflection of their character? When what's character? Patience, love, 
kind, gentle, meek, giving, self-sacrifice. Do you really know their character? They're, they're people of their word. They're integral. Their inward life speaks louder than their outward life. Their prayer life speaks louder than their pulpit preaching ministry, than their social media accounts. The prophetic person must have a foundation of God's word and must have a foundation of value systems that keep them mature, whole, and holy. Someone say amen. Their values. I have value systems. Bethel Church, Bill Johnson has values. I have a value system. Okay. I'm I'm all about relationship. I'm all about honor. Okay. I believe in supporting people. I believe in giving. I'm a generous person. I love missions. I always sow into missions and soul winning and crusades. Okay. Uh, I'm a person of honor. Okay. I'm a person who believes in family. Uh, shoot. You know, I love to give generously. Uh, you know, I, I love to be a person of my word no matter what. I, I love to be excellent, go over and beyond. Like these are certain values that I have, okay? Mm -mm. Not to mention the hair, exactly. Character, value. Your personality can open the door, but it's your character that keeps you there. The gifting can open the door, but it's your character that keeps you in the house. Some say amen. Some say Jesus, mature me in love. Mature me in wisdom. In the name of Jesus, some say amen. Are you with me here today? Are you enjoying this? Today I'm talking about the prophetic person and how maturity is an essential. Like I said earlier, there's many high-level prophetic people, very... Um, <clears throat> very um gifted people but if your soul is not mature if your heart is not mature if you as a person you're not mature in love then your perception and your view and your discernment is now tainted and skewed and off okay so we need to be mature in our character and our love we need to be mature in who we are as a person and remember this before i go into the 11 types of prophetic people remember this all right, because um, lots of lots of gifted people are mature in their gift, but they're babies, which means that they're actually not mature in their stewardship of the gift. My armor bearers, I had two armor bearers. They they lived with me for a season, and I told them, I said, I know the type of person you are by the by how your room looks. I I said, stop trying to win souls for Jesus when you can't even make your own bed. All right, somebody. How are you going to be a millionaire and a billionaire if you don't even pay your taxes and if you uh, don't even pay your bills on time? All right. Maturity. Something maturity. Y'all still talking about my hair. <laughs> All right. I want to talk to you about 11 types of prophetic people. This is going to bless you. Are you with me here today? 11 types of prophetic people. All right. 11 types of prophetic people. Number one, the first type of prophetic person is that they are mysterious. Say mysterious. Okay. Prophets are many times very mysterious, okay? They're very mysterious. They're uh, hard to figure out. Um, you know, they, they're they many times a parable. Prophetic people are like parables, you know? They're mysterious. They're deep, okay? Uh, it's hard to figure them out. Um, like most of y'all ladies, most of y'all women, okay? Hard to figure out, okay? But prophetic people are many times, number one, mysterious. Daniel chapter 2, verse 28. Um, the Bible here says that God is the revealer of mysteries. So many prophetic people are mysterious and they live in the realm of mysteries. 
Some would say the realm of mysteries, all right? Um, the second type of prophetic person is that they move in knowledge, words of knowledge. Some say knowledge, okay? Um, here, uh, 1 Corinthians 12, 8, uh, it talks about, the Bible talks about how the prophet began to foretell, okay? He saw into the future, foretell, not fortune tell, foretell, and saw future events. And he had a words of knowledge coupled with words of wisdom to, uh, to warn, correct, protect, prepare the people. So knowledge, same knowledge, okay? Uh, so there are many prophets, prophetic people, that have a high level word of knowledge gift, okay? Amen. Number three, the third type of prophetic person is scribe. Someone say scribe. I love this. I know I'm a scribe. I'm also a word of knowledge, but I know I'm also a scribe. And let me tell you, the more you move in Christ, the more you can actually partake of all of these types, okay? Uh, scribe, okay, uh, 2 Kings 22, verses 14 to 20. Uh, there were poets, uh, Habakkuk, you know, uh, in this time, uh, write the vision and make it plain. Uh, you look at Ezra, how Ezra was a priest prophet, but he was also a scribe. And so there are scribe prophets, prophetic people that are very poetic, and they know how to write the oracles of God in writing. Uh, many times these scribe prophets can be very judicial or governmental as well. But you write the things of God, okay? Uh, you may not be very vocal, but you are a writer. Okay, like I love what Rick Joyner says. Rick Joyner many times says that he's not the best speaker, but and but he would rather prefer to just write and write and write. Okay. The fourth type of prophetic person is arts and creativity. Okay, we see uh, that in Ezekiel four and five that there's prophetic art, that there's drama. Um, there's uh, sculptures that God uses uh, to allude and speak to the people. And of course, we see in the book of Exodus uh, with Bezalel in Exodus 31, verse 2, how the first person that the Spirit of God, in a sense, came upon was used to create and to build the temple as a creative person so if you're in the arts and media and in the creative realm may the anointing anoint you to not just poetically but creatively artistically um express yourself remember personality is about how you express your character your values number five <clears throat> the fifth type of prophetic person is worship and music my gosh and we see this all throughout the psalms david was a prophetic psalmist okay um my gosh uh first chronicles 25 1 <clears throat> we read david together with the commanders of the army set apart some of the sons of asaph Haman, jeduthun for the ministry of prophesying according by harps lyres and cymbals okay Judges 5, the prophetess Deborah wrote a song, okay? So, um, prophetic people many times love worship and music. And there are some prophets that are <clears throat> in the realm of music and singing, okay? Psalmists, all right, musicians. Uh, that's why there's times where just the musicians will prophesy out of the instruments, Okay? <clears throat> but again, it takes a level of skill and maturity to get there. <clears throat> Certain prophets, prophetic people, musicians, psalmists, know how to release certain sounds and songs in the moment to increase the atmosphere and it begins to prophesy. 
And let me tell you this. That's why a lot of people in arts and media and the entertainment and Hollywood, a lot of these actors, actresses, uh, rappers, musicians, they're actually prophets and they're very prophetic. But they're used and filled with the wrong influence and spirit. <clears throat> Number six. Uh, the sixth type of prophetic person is the Nabi or the speaking or the utterance. The Nabi, okay? The Hebrew word for prophet in the Old Testament is mainly Nabi. Someone say Nabi. Which stands for like a river, okay? Which stands for utterance, okay? I have a gift of gad. I've trained it myself as well, of course, in the Lord. But uh, there's an utterance gift where there's times where, sh whew, you just know the Spirit of God is just speaking out of you. You're just uttering. Like, it's bubbling, it's bubbling, it's bubbling. You can't stop. It's just like oozing out, bubbling forth. And you just start speaking. You are an orator, a speaker, a nabi. Someone say amen. And many people today are moving in the nabi prophetic flow of speaking, of utterance, of... Uh, yes, I agree, Tupac was a prophet. I agree... Many people were, and they still are. Um, Shatara You guys still hear me here? Give me some hearts and lights if you still hear me. Uh, all right. The seventh type of prophetic person is prayer and intercession. Prayer and intercession. Okay. Look at Daniel chapter 6, verse 10. Excuse me. Daniel fasted and he interceded. Look at Lou Engel. Lou Engel's main call. He had a ministry called the call. Uh, Daniel's, uh, Lou Engel's main thing is to fast and to pray and to gather solemn assemblies. Okay. So there's some prophets, prophetic people that predominantly pray and fast and intercede. Okay. Amen. So, uh, Hallelujah. The eighth type of prophetic person is dreams and visions. Once again, look at Daniel chapter 5, verse 12. Daniel was found to have a keen mind and knowledge and understanding. Also, the ability to interpret dreams, explain riddles, solve difficult problems. Look at the life of Joseph. Okay, so the eighth type of prophetic person has a heavy dream and vision and interpretation gift. They get dreams, they get visions. They are able to see uh, in, in experiences and visitations. My gosh, I feel the Holy Ghost. They're able to experience angels. And, and you know, it's just so odd and peculiar. Shatalalalabosokorato. I pray for the mantle of Daniel to come upon you. In Jesus' name. Number nine. The ninth type of prophetic person is signs and wonders. Which, which is like me as well. Charlie Shamp. Jeff Jansen. Signs and wonders. Elijah and Elisha. Or look at Moses. These were signs and wonders prophets. They moved in healing. They moved in miracles. They moved in peculiar, odd manifestations, signs and wonders, notable miracles. Not just miracles of, oh, the knee is healed, hallelujah, or the arthritis in the fingers, hallelujah. No, like notable miracles, the dead being raised, fish being multiplied, Food being multiplied, the sun stopping in the middle of the sky, time, like unusual, notable, undeniable miracles, signs and wonders. Amen. The tenth type of prophetic person is seers. Some say seers. And, uh, you know, Samuel Shema was a seer. In fact, he was known as the seer prophet. Okay. And remember, in each of these categories, you can be at an immature or a mature level. You could be at a lower or a higher level. You could be at a lower or a higher ranking 
in these graces or in these realms. You might say, Pastor Ben, I'm very high in dream divisions, but when it comes to the seer, like I'm, or when it comes to word of knowledge, woke, uh, it's uh, I'm a l little low, like you know, and it's okay. That's why we all see in part and we know in parts, and we operate and come together. Some say, Amen. And you ask, you pursue, you go after the things of God, Amen. The tenth type of prophetic person is seer. Some say seers. Uh, we see Apostle John, how he saw in the spirit the book of Revelation. I saw a man. We see Ezekiel, where he was caught up with visions. So seer prophets are able to see in the spirit, in the spiritual realm. And the eleventh type of the eleventh type of prophetic person is teaching and preaching. Okay, it's the ability to articulate the mind and the words of God and to present it in a proper way. Teaching and preaching. Remember, every prophetic person is meant to multiply. Someone say multiply. The Bible here says the fivefold ministry, okay? Every office, prophets, prophetic people, our job is to multiply. Someone say multiply. Our job is to equip, is to impart, is to train, empower, to help raise up, and to um, multiply. However, why would you multiply yourself when you're not whole? Why would you multiply yourself when you're still dealing with insecurity and you're still childish and you're immature? Why would you multiply yourself when you yourself needs to get dealt with? But the greatest role of a prophetic person is to manage this, their life with God, and to learn to manage and multiply themselves amongst their community. You are a prophetic person, whether you know it or not. We're all on a journey of maturity, growing in love, knowing who God is, growing in these different realms of the prophetic. We're all in a journey. Some say journey. And once again, I pray that your character, your heart, your values, your morals, that we would be mature people, not just mature prophets, or not just mature prophetic people, but mature people. <laughs> Sean Bowles loves to play video games. You know, Joshua Mills loves to go to Disneyland. <laughs> it's not childish, childishness, childlikeness. Many unique personalities. Jesus. Jesus. People of God, this is Pastor Ben. Thank you for joining me today. For day two, part two of Growing the Prophetic. I'm so glad you joined. Very powerful. Very powerful. And uh, I want you to comment below. What did you learn? Did you learn something? Did you receive something? Did you enjoy this teaching, this segment today? Did you learn something? I want you to comment below. What did you learn? What did you receive? What spoke to you the most? Amen. Uh, thanks for joining me today for day two, part two. The Prophetic Person on our five-day, five-part series, Grow in the Prophetic. Thank you for joining me. Tomorrow, I'm going to be live again for day three, part three, at 10 a.m. PST. Tomorrow, I am going to talk about the protocols of the prophetic. All right, it's going to be so good. The protocols of the prophetic. Make sure you subscribe to our YouTube, our Benlam Global. Follow me on Instagram, Benlam Global. And as well, uh, if you want to grow deeper, uh, in connection, if you want to grow deeper in the prophetic, 
uh, be more connected with me and our ministry, I invite you to join our new group mentorship. Yes, group mentorship called the 7M Glory Equip, okay? 7M Glory Equip, I invite you, we welcome you. All right, I can't wait to see you in that private group called the 7M Glory Equip where I and our team, we are committed to seeing you go higher and fulfill your calling like never before. Amen. This is Pastor Ben. Thanks for joining me today. Appreciate you. Have a good day.